Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Disability Matters. I'm Morgan Spicer, self-evident coordinator with People First of West Virginia. I've learned over the years the importance of self-advocacy and how much of an impact it makes to have your story out there. Disability Matters is designed to cover a wide range of topics that will inform you, inspire you, and encourage you to strengthen your advocacy journey. Now, we'll do this by offering a variety of guests as well as interviews with advocates around the state. It's not just legislative advocacy, it's so much more. Now, we just finished our 31st Annual People First Conference at Jackson's Mill, where we have the honor of hearing from Aaron Thompson, our keynote speaker for this year's conference. During those three days, I had the honor of speaking to Aaron in a one-on-one -on -one interview where she talked about her personal journey and offered encouragement for advocates in an effort to strengthen their advocacy journey. Let's get to that interview right now. We're here at the People First Conference here in Jane Lee, West Virginia, and today's special guest is our keynote speaker for this year's conference, Erin Thompson. Thanks so much for joining us and welcome to the show. Thank you. So first things, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, my name is Erin Margaret Thompson, and I have been, um, been participating in some uh, conferences in the Virginia area and just as the West in the West Virginia area, where it was like uh, late nine or like 11 years ago when I attended to the West Virginia conference in somewhere in the Valley, and I, I gave a, a really great, a powerful uh, public speaking and engagement presentation, and I had done a fantastic job with that. So how have you used your self-advocacy in your like daily life, your work life, your personal life? How do you use your self-advocacy skills? Um, I use my self-advocacy skills by with tips and by with uh, tips and tricks. Um, what kind of really put uh, my advocacy was when I was uh, working when I used to work at the Ark in Northern Virginia with Nancy Mercer and Jill. Bigly. What helped me big a lot was uh, the uh, support area and to build up my self-advocacy was to get a lot of uh, strengths and to do a lot of public speaking and by reaching out to all of your communities and a lot of uh, support. So you, you've just had a lot of good connections to help strengthen your self-advocacy journey then? Yeah. And I think that's really good is to have those connections for the encouragement, just to teach you some new skills, you know, strength in numbers. That's something I'm really big on. So, so you hosted, you were the keynote speaker at the West Virginia conference. What was that? I'm sorry. Yeah, that is correct. So if I can remember and fall back down to memory lane, it was probably like in 2011 or 2013, where I think it was um, uh, somewhere, and um, it was um, at the conference, and I think in the Valley area, I, I think, where I gave um, a big uh, PowerPoint presentation, and, and it was a, a speech where I uh, built up my confidence and I had uh, basically gave a speech on what, I, what my self-advocacy means a lot to me about. What has changed in self-advocacy from then? Have you noticed any of those changes? Yeah, so I had well, noticed uh, some little changes where, um, where we were in equipped, where we built up a lot of screens and to build a lot of new challenges with um, our new advocacy uh, a progress with um, by getting rid of the mental retardation, by getting rid of the R word. And what really helped uh, with the advocacy part was uh, rolling out with all of the, um, the uh, community outreach and for me and and of the NGO to uh, go down to Richmond like over like 200 times in a row where we had a uh, talk to legislators and senators and to 
the secretary to uh, give them a feedback on what we really needed the support and a lot of well, changes that we needed to fix with um, the mental retardation. And we were so honored and so grateful that it was like in 2011 or 2014, I think, um, the mental retardation just uh, I got, and what kind of like really helped was to get rid of the, the mental retardation and now it was called the intellectual and devent to mental disabilities. Yeah, I, I'm very, very for against the use of the R word. I mean, I get a little upset when people use it around me. It's just that it's just something that I think it belittles individuals. So I, I don't think it's a very fair word to use. So and it sounds like you've had quite a long journey, you know, spearheading that and you, you know, we got the results we wanted. Now we have the uh, spread the word campaign. Yes. And that actually helps people learn to uh, you know, restrain from using that word because it is very demeaning to individuals' disabilities. So what would you recommend to individuals? This year, we've had about 150 people here at our conference. Back then, we used to have, I think, almost double of that. So what would you recommend for individuals that would like to consider maybe coming back to conference next year or maybe another People First event that we hold? I would say um, that the major part of that is, um, is to do a lot of engagement and with the right of support by reaching out to all of the arts um, in your local areas that will contribute to all that will um, help you uh, bring in a lot more people that will participate in this in event. And, and it will lead to uh, getting more uh, rallies and to get more uh, to spread the word a campaign and to get a lot more people to be all rally up over that. Okay. So you have been here at our conference for the past couple of days. Have you enjoyed yourself here? Yes, and I loved it. All the classes were great and amazing. I was learning a lot in the class of course and and the best part is that um that what is um the great thing about doing the workout classes is to take a lot of well note taking uh to do a lot of well note taking skills. So what classes did you take, if I can ask? Um I took um Organizing well your health this afternoon and this morning was um, independence and independent and independent living. So was there maybe like a reason you took those classes? Is it something that you're using just to prepare yourself for anything? Uh, yeah. So the majority of, of that is uh, taking uh, classes for independent while living. And um, and being in equipped to be um, to have the opportunities to uh, start to live on your own and to be more independent uh, without living with your parents. Now that is a big challenge to face when you don't want to be living with your parents anymore and you want to be on your own and be independent and to do things on your own and to be hanging out with your roommates and to have some really fun and experiences. And that's something that's happening to you soon? Yes. So tell us a little bit about what's happening. So basically what the situation is that at the end of September, on September 30th, may be our move out day uh, of our Fairfax house, but right now we're not totally sure yet because it's not really but finalized what moving day um, that we're gonna be moving in, in, into our new place. So it may be at the end of September, or in the beginning of October, probably. And so me and my three roommates, so I have two roommates and an RA that is gonna be all our, all three of our in, in assistants that will, will be getting a lot of help and support in those areas where we might get help with the cooking skills, um, if you need any help with, um, with organizing your belongings or gain the right supports with um, how to cook on your own and to how to uh, maintain and to 
um, hanging out with your roommates and the family room area. Are you excited about this? Yes, I'm getting so excited. This is a very, very new, uh, challenging experience for me and my uh, three roommates. And what challenges are you facing? Um, so all of us are going to be facing that once when we move out of our old house, we're going to be fit into what is called uh, the Robinson at One, right very close uh, to George Mason Book University. But the uh, challenges that we're going to be facing that is going to be very hard is that with me and the other roommate that I have, and her name is Wilsonette. And so there is a lot of support areas that we need because when we are going to be uh, learning how to cook on our own, we can't really be, uh, um, uh, we will have to have um, our assistant, well, Sarah, that will be helping us with the, uh, with the stove and with the oven because we can't be, because it's kind of like it's very hard well, for me and, and my uh, roommate to um, to well, cook things on the stove and on the oven because there's a lot of safety issues that need to be equipped with. So I, there is a lot of challenges when it comes to moving. Uh, I have, when I moved into my new place, there's just a lot of things to consider when you move out. You know, you you got to make sure your bills are taken care of. You, you've you just got a lot to think about. And, you know, it's a perfect way to use your self-advocacy because you're, at, you know, you're, you know, advocating for these things that I need to live my life independently. So, and that's something that you should never be afraid of is to ask for help. That's something that I'm very strong about is it's not a sign of weakness to never have to ask for help. So... I, th I have no doubt that you will probably get through those challenges and rise above them. So is there anything else that you would like to add? Um, I would I'd like to add uh, that, um, that before I um, start uh, moving out of my parents' house, it kind of will help me uh, to be very well, successful and for me to be very more independent and to I learn um, the community wise, like uh, going on campus at Mason, or getting and by getting your transportation, by uh, taking both yourself into work every morning. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm glad you got to come this year and be a part of it, see what we're all about. So we really appreciate you coming, and thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Thank you. We want to send a special thank you to Aaron Thompson for being this year's keynote speaker for the 31st annual People First Conference, as well as being a guest on this month's Disability Matters. Remember, if you would like to share your self-advocacy story or have a topic you would like covered on a future episode, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can call the ARC at 304-422-3151, extension 129, or you can email me at morgan.spicer at thearcmov.org. I would love to hear from you and have you as a guest on a future episode. With that, we're out of time for this month's episode. Join us next time for another episode of Disability Matters. We are advocating, educating, and celebrating the potential within you. See you next time.